Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. Greetings, and thank you for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours, right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. You can listen live on air or online at iHeart Radio, Odyssey, TuneIn app, Smart Speakers, NCCRadio.org, or on our own WHPC app. Download it today and you can listen to all of our shows. And podcasts of the show are available um, also after the show airs. So today our guest is Dr. Sharon Martin. She is an MD and PhD who graduated from John Hopkins School of Medicine and is a board-certified physician in internal medicine with a doctorate in physiology. And she is also a graduate of the Healing the Light Body curriculum of the Four Winds Society. She hosts radio shows, including Maximum Medicine and Sacred Magic. And also, we're going to be talking about her brand new book, which is um, really bridges the mystical and scientific for maximum medicine. And the book is Maximize Your Healing Power. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Sharon. And it's Dr. Sharon Martin. Hi, Ellen. Thank you so much. And please call me Sharon. I don't need to be official. Okay. But we had very good news about your wonderful book that you just shared with us. And um, maximize your healing power. I mean, you bring together in this book, which is um, actually a top seller on Amazon right now, shamanic, shamanic healing techniques to overcome your health challenges. So you're talking about shamanism, but of course, you must be combining it with your knowledge about, and what I say is conventional medicine, because when you get into natural therapeutics, such as energy and shamanic techniques, then you're talking about traditional medicine. So you are actually combining conventional knowledge with traditional knowledge. And isn't that what we need to do? You know, if we don't bring back that ancient wisdom, we have so much that we've lost. I mean, our modern mainstream medicine, how long has it been really around for? 200 years? You know, that's at, that's like uh, being generous, but also how it has deteriorated. And I'm sure you as a physician would agree when what a doctor does, and we're not blaming them, they're part of the system, walk in and someone's on a table, they never touch them, they never smell them, they've never been near them. And what they're doing is standing across the room at a computer screen looking for a code. That's like takes up most of the time. And then whatever the person is describing as their issue, they find the code for that. And then a drug that matches it, write it down. And that's the end. I am not going to disagree that medicine is broken. Mainstream medicine is broken. And it became monetized. It's a relationship that has so many financial overlays that I think we lose something. But that's my goal in my book. Um, several goals. One is um, a minor goal, although not not meaning uh, less important, is for physicians to wake up and grab all of this traditional um, ancient wisdom and bring it to bear because there's literally millennia of healing that uh, people did before mainstream medicine. The other, the bigger goal is for patients, people to get their power back and to take charge of their health and to believe and to know that they do have control. They can impact. And that's what my book is all about. You can become the conductor of your own, you know, drive your own train. And there are many things that mainstream medicine does, and they do well, but it's also missing a whole bunch. And I think if we pull them together, we're going to find incredible power and efficacy. So that's what I'm all about. 
And that can definitely be done because I worked years ago with a doctor who was the head of surgery at Huntington Hospital. Uh huh. And I was giving a lecture on really fluorescent lights, in fact, and how deleterious they are for a, a normal biological flow of many body systems. And because of that, he intervened in the construction that was going on in the new surgical unit and, and used healing lights instead, and it didn't cost any more. Wonderful. So these things can definitely be, you know, recognized and used together. And I think one thing, and not just for doctors, but for all healthcare providers, nurses, physical therapists, speech therapists, um, all the staff, just changing your perception to help a person see the possibilities that exist outside of what appears to be the only way that's happening is I'm sick, things are going downhill, um, it's going to turn bad. But if all of us as healers in our own rights hold a different perception and hold a different outcome, that alone, and even the way you talk to a patient, that alone can change how it goes down. So that's, I've written several things about that in my book. The list in the table of contents, just reading it is beautiful. You talk Thank about you. bring back the mystical. Layer upon layer, the power builds, the chicana and the medicine wheels. What are medicine wheels? In the shamanic training that I did, which was a Peruvian-based uh, energy medicine, we learned about the medicine wheel. The Native Americans in the Southwest United States have these, where it's a clockwise circle going through the directions, the cardinal directions, south, west, north, and east. And that view to me, that imagery and symbolism of going in a spiral, I saw a lot of patients' journeys as being in a spiral to tackle a problem, to try to bring change about, and then to learn to live with the new, the new outcome. And so, I intuited, um, I had three medicine wheels that I had been taught, but I intuited two others as a way to tackle any kind of health or life challenge. And when you feel yourself in that symbolism and you see that you are going on a journey and that you're not the same, even when you come back to what was the quote starting point, you are different. And those shifts can help you see the mythic journey that you're on and give you a little hope that it's not all about the literal world you might see in front of you. Yes, maybe you're getting uh, medicines, maybe you have to go in for surgery, maybe you have to get some chemo, but there are more things that you can do. And that includes how you think about it, how you connect to the higher forces in the universe, and that includes your spirituality. And that can bring you a lot of power and help shift the outcome. So what about, I mean, you're talking about some serious illnesses there. Because if somebody's getting chemo, you know, we're talking about a very serious situation. But way before that, like one of the things I love to point out is that we can also often prevent these kind of things by being more in tune as we move forward. And we can use a lot of things such as ritual in our daily life to just make things, you know, more fun as well as have better overall health. Yes, I like that. I picked those examples because I was saying if you're stuck already in mainstream medicine, um, don't despair. There are still possibilities outside that uh, ribbon, that current that you're floating in. But absolutely, when you connect... And the big thing I think that I learned from shamanism and the other esoteric trainings that I did is when you connect to something bigger than yourself, whether you call it your soul, your higher self, God, angels, nature, spirits, anything you want to connect with, you're tapping into a universal field of information the divine matrix, the Akashic field, whatever you want to call it, that field of consciousness. And if you can do that day to day, 
you bring power to bear on your life. And I think you're absolutely right. Ritual helps you connect to that, and that can make a big difference. And you're, again, right in, wouldn't it be nice if we could get people before the horse runs out of the barn? Well, yes. So that would mean discussing these kinds of things, such as our connection to the energy that's all around us. I mean, to me, I taught my kids that, you know, when they were born, like I said, they're in their 50s, because it was just part of everyday experience rather than being something that would be considered weird. Right. That'd be so wonderful. But, you know, what unfortunately we're bombarded by the stuff that's in uh, the media right now. And so we're thought to believe, we're, we're taught to believe that we have only these things that are brought up on the news when you're right. If we can get back out in nature, connect to this field all around us, see the power that exists when you tap into your spiritual side, your life does become more full and easier to prevent things from happening. So why is incorporating something that might be considered mystical and spiritual important if you want to shift away from something that you find challenging? Well, as I said, the way the system of mainstream medicine is today, it's broken. We do need to incorporate that. We have a lot to overcome in the system. And this would be a depressing topic if we kept going on it. But, you know, if it's not um, government regulated, if it's not something that can be charged for, ticked on a box, it just, the system is broken. But for, for, for an individual provider from all levels, from the nursing assistant uh, to the nurse practitioner, if you can shift how you talk to a person, if you can shift your awareness to include this, you can impact greatly. I remember the first time I decided I was, I thought it took a lot of courage to talk about this stuff that is quote woo woo to a patient. I thought they're going to laugh me out of here. Who, you know, are they going to? That's the other thing, the fear of being sued. So I started out by saying, this is not scientific. This is my spiritual belief. But as soon as you start talking to people about your energy seems low, it seems like um, you've got a burden. It feels like your dra- energy is draining out. They know that. They feel it. They understand that. And they are so happy to have the chance to actually talk about it because they feel it. This isn't new to their awareness. It's just new for people to talk to them about. That's true if you bring it up. So do you feel like your new book, which is getting you know top selling status on Amazon, that means a lot of people are hear- hearing about it and they're excited about it. Um, are you saying it's more a guide for healthcare providers than patients or is it for everyone? For everyone. It's mostly, it does help if you're a provider, I hope it will read it, you'll open your eyes. But it's for people to, ordinary people to take back your power, to know that you can impact your health. You are not, you're not out of options. And so many times I think people feel that they don't have any control over what's happening to them. And you do have control. Just in meditations and, you know, journeys, that you can do the visualizations. And I teach many of these in my book. You can determine what foods are actually the best for you. You can sit and have a conversation and visualize your healed self and have a conversation of what you need to do to get there. And those are very powerful moments because you're communing with that deepest part of yourself and that part that's spiritually Uh, connected, soul, God, however you want to call it. Well, let me reintroduce you at this point in case someone's just tuning in. And thank you for joining us, listeners. You are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. You can listen while we're online or um, also live or on iHeartRadio and other podcast 
venues. And for more information on today's guest or topic, you can send us an email at whpc at ncc.edu. Our guest today is Dr. Sharon Martin, who is an MD with a, a long, beautifully um, involved history of being very active as a doctor for many years at top schools, such as John Hopkins. And also, she has become involved with energy medicine in terms of shamanic techniques and other things that can bring a lot of peace and hope to people everywhere, including patients with challenges, as well as healthcare providers who have tons of challenges as well. And her beautiful book is called Maximize Your Healing Power. And you can really find it anywhere. It is a top seller. So, Dr. Sharon, it is true what you brought up before, that a healthcare provider themselves who might want to share this information might feel intimidated because of, you know, lawsuits and things like that. Yes, and the, unfortunately, that's what we've become in this system that we're in now. I think if we, I think many people sue because they did not feel heard. They did not feel listened to. And they felt that things just steamrolled over them. And so I think it's equally important for patients to insist on a communication and to get what they want, um, but also to stop lawsuits. And then maybe doctors will stop doing dumb stuff like sticking only to the scientifically proven and start talking outside of that information, because we need to incorporate what you call as traditional, I'll say ancient and indigenous, we need to incorporate that because there is a whole fountain of wisdom that we can add and bring to bear. So um, I'd like to see that happen. It's not going to happen right away, I'm afraid, but I'd like to help push that, that to occur. Well, you know, as we move forward, some things like that are in the process because I've been a longtime member of the American Holistic Nurses Association, and we have always been focused on the energy interchange that is going on, whether you're aware of it or not, in terms of that interchanging energy field between the person who's there as a healer, in that case, yourself as a doctor or nurses or other caregivers, and the recipient. And that it's always a back and forth energetic interchange that if we're aware of it, we can massage that field to make it have less edges, to make it smoother, to make it more healing for both people involved in the exchange. And certainly training in those techniques are just so helpful. I love that. And you're right. And in shamanic teachings, that energetic connection occurs even before you meet the person. So even when you have the intention of going to a session or an appointment, that energetic um, is establishing. So you're absolutely right. There's a lot that goes on that's unseen and I think that's why, as you have mentioned, the way you talk about it, the way you frame it, your perception of it is so very important. How do you find that your own patients react when you bring things up like that? Like one thing I've seen happen over the years um, is some people who are very strict in terms of their own religious practice, um, be it Orthodox Judaism or sort of born-again Christianity, really don't want to hear anything about these terms? If I had a strict Christian patient, very deeply uh, fundamental in their beliefs, very Bible-oriented, I wouldn't say shaman. I wouldn't say I would talk about connecting to God. I would talk about the approach of healing as if it was faith healing, because that energy, that spiritual healing that occurs with the indigenous and shamanic and energy techniques is 
about intention, which is faith. And so it's, I would change my language, but that doesn't stop, in my experience, that has not stopped them from feeling it and knowing the truth of it. That's um, true. That's really wonderful. You know, like meeting someone where they're at. That's really, really the way to go. Um, I think something that's occurred in modern times, even in terms of meditation, because that word meditation often has that, you know, mystical tinge, and some people don't want to hear that. But then when they talk about mindfulness, that has opened the door because it seems more secular. Or prayer. Right. Like, you know, and I might start my conversation by saying, are you a religious person? And they'll kind of, you know, maybe give me a hand, not really. I said, are you spiritual? Oh, yes. And then I'll say, you know, do you believe in God or is there some, do you have a guardian angel? Who do you talk to in times of need? And they'll say, well, I have angels. So then I can say, all right, so when you sit quietly and you talk with your angels, this is what I want you to do. So it's, you can make the components have names that the person understands, but the process is still the same. Well, you do discuss in your book the fact that all societies around the world, and obviously you've studied like a Peruvian path, but I'm sure you see that same thing mirrored, regardless of which path you're investigating. They always talk about either nature spirits or power animals, that it, that is actually very common, that there are some unseen forces that are represented in some kind of physical way that you could imagine. That is very, very common. Yes, and that's what, if we can, you and I and other health givers can encourage people to see there are so many resources in the unseen world there are currents of energy in the universe, some of which have intelligence, some of which, many of which we actually feel. Um, and we may even connect to many people remember when they were a kid and they walked in the woods and they felt like they were talking to the trees or the fairies. Um, let them know that those energies are there to be communicated with. Um, and the amount of feeling of resources and the feeling that you're not alone, that it, that really helps. Well, I think it's so wonderful that someone like yourself, who's so highly regarded in mainstream medicine and conventional healing, which we do not want to throw away, because um, sometimes people get so involved in this kind of shamanic type aspect um, that they don't want to participate at all in any of the really life-saving techniques that are available with Western medicine. And that's also an imbalance. I find that sometimes, um, and it, it's very frustrating to me and actually breaks my heart. When I have a patient who, I'll tell you, a person who has a woman who has breast cancer absolutely would not do anything but go to a nutritionist um, and get different supplements. Well, the cat's already out of the bag. So in my opinion, do both. Keep doing your beautiful nutritional dietary supplements. We all, not all perhaps, but many of us have read about the power of brassica, of broccoli at, as an anti-cancer. And there are broccoli teas Um or extracts of the ingredient, I forget its name, glycos, I forget, anyway. But if you can combine that, then you have the best power going forward, and you don't want to ignore one. And similarly, if you're going to only just go down the traditional, conventional, mainstream, I use traditional in the wrong context here, um, let me say mainstream, conventional path, your spirit may not be involved. Your spirit may be detached from the whole process because you find it absolutely discomforting. But if you can bring that and keep your power going in that arena, then your opportunity for healing just, well, it's more than doubles, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so, too. So, I mean, they're both here for a reason. Like, if we think about it, you know, they're all part of, if you believe in God, God's gifts, 
but it has gone to where it's all the way skewed to more of that uh, Western medical concept, which is outside of what most doctors, why they became doctors to begin with, and has become, like you said, so overly commercialized and really focusing just on the billing potential of most therapeutic interventions. So that's an imbalance. And giving all of the wonderful advances that we can find in modern medicine up is also an imbalance. So, you know, there's there's a path where all of the above, whatever works and what's ever great for people can be used together. I love that. That's the power that I see. And I talk about this in my book, Maximize Your Healing Power, about a Venn diagram where the sweet spot is when you bring mainstream in with shamanic and in with energy. Um, and Shamanic includes, I think, all of the herbal essences and um, essential oils, all of those things. So I'm not ignoring them. But you find that sweet spot of immense power when you bring it all together. So what about paying attention to being connected to nature and the earth? I don't think most people realize, and this is what I learned in studying shamanism, Humans, and this sounds obvious, but it, when you feel into the energetics of it, humans do not exist without the earth. We have been in sync with the earth since our, since we began. Well, how long ago are humans? 200,000 years, maybe. But nature, trees, for example, we're talking hundreds of millions of years. Getting out into nature. I know you talk about a lot as we mm -hmm. come to the end of our time together. So many wonderful things that people can incorporate into their life in your book, Maximize Your Healing Power. Thank you so much for being our guest today, Dr. Sharon Morton. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you so much. And because of your listeners and the people who've already bought the book, Keep that energy going. I think together, Ellen, with how you approach things and what you're teaching in your show and with my book and other things, we can heal the world. Thank you all for tuning into Herbally Yours, produced in the studios of 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College, Garden City, New York. For further information, email us at whpc at ncc.edu. This is your host, Ellen Kamai at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us next week for another edition of Herbally Yours. Until then... Stay healthy.